On today's episode in My Life of Football, we are joined by former Palms FC player and on the road co host, Charles V. Yo, see the black top perk and the curb that's a millionaire whip. I don't serve, no sell it on strips, might pull up to a function. If it's pagan free, smile in my face, but they hate on me, man, it's pagan season. Talk for no reason, see man talk and start sneezing, allergic to fakeness. Man, it's greatness, I'm preaching. Oh, it's it's our season. You say your team's winning, cuz. Wait, I was in the spot last season. You either flip people. Charlie, aka Charles V, how are we doing today, mate? Going on, bro. What's going on? Happy, happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday, Friday indeed. Happy Friday indeed. Okay, what's one? What's the light in life? Is that too much light? Let me turn around. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah, it's good like that. Um, well, first thing to ask: How have you been coping with the whole lockdown? Um, <laughs> you know, not gonna lie, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been tough for mm-hmm. everyone, though. You know, it's been tough for everyone. Everyone's been suffering. Um, but yeah, we survive. We move. We get through it. Um, me and the missus have been having having dramas and nightmares as you would, but uh, yeah, no, we move. We, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're getting through it. We're getting through it. Obviously, you've got the whole streaming thing. Is that what's kind of getting you through it? All? Um, um yeah, uh, mate. Yeah, honestly, that's yeah. I guess that's been a, ma- a major factor. It's something, something to do. You know, um, we've been doing it quite a lot, and uh, me and Matt spoke about. Me and Smith spoke about it um, when we got into lockdown. We was like. Obviously, we can't get to on the road and stuff. So we was like, "What can we do?" And we was like, "I just give streaming a crack. Like, see what happens in it. Something to do." We, we was gaming anyway. We was like, we was playing games anyway. So we was like, "Oh, we might just stream it. See how it goes." Um, so yeah, we started streaming. I mean, unfortunately, Matt can't get on as regularly as I can, but I get on quite regularly. It's been and it's been going alright, mate. And it, yeah, it's something. It's a it's a distraction. It's a good distraction. And we, and we built a we built a very good little community too. So uh, we have a lot of fun, man. A lot of people, a lot of the same people come by. Just yeah, it's just, it's just it's just a good crack. Loads of fun. We have, yeah, we have a lot of fun, and we're gaming. So yeah, man, mm. it's, good. it's good. Other other than the streaming, is there anything else you've been doing to kind of get you through it? Keeping fit wise, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Mate, on it, fitness fitness has gone out the window, bro. Um, can't lie, can't lie. Um, I literally pretty much all I do is eat, sleep, rave, repeat. No, I eat, sleep, and stream. That's what I do. Eat, sleep, stream, repeat. That's all I'm doing. My fitness is shocking. Me and Becky went for a walk. Uh, my girlfriend, me and Becky went for a walk a few days ago. And we took a ball with us. And we walked up to the local field, kicking a ball around for about a half hour. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I, mean, I think I'm going to have to start doing some sort of, uh, some sort of workout. <laughs> yeah. Um... I've literally done nothing. I've literally done nothing. But that, that, I mean, to be fair, just before lockdown, just literally just before we went into lockdown, like the week before, I broke my arm. Oh, right. Playing football. On a Sunday, um, yeah. I, I snapped my arm, so I had that anyway. So I couldn't, I couldn't carry on like keeping fit or anything because I was in a cast for for like the last two months. I only come off a few weeks ago. Um, I couldn't really mm-hmm. do anything anyway. So yeah, I've, I've been kind of lazy. I can't lie, I've been kind of lazy. <laughs> hmm. You're probably most known for Palms FC and on the road. We'll, we'll start before then. What are your earliest memories of football growing up? Earliest memories of football, wow. Um, do you know what? It's funny. Um, like my old man, he was a, an avid football follower, an avid West Ham fan. Um, loved football to pieces. Couldn't get enough of it. And uh, I, I used to hate it growing up. I used to hate it. I used to despise it. Um, I've got two cousins who are the same age as me. We was all born with, like, within a month of each other. And uh, they used to love it. They played all the time when I was kids playing computer games and that and I used to hate it and I think I must have got to the age of about 10 and I started playing in like um, summer tournaments and stuff and I started to get into it uh, and I started playing games with my cousins and stuff um, and then suddenly I literally just fell in love with it and like over the years I think I didn't start playing football properly till about the age of 20, 21 like 11 aside mm. Um and then just made up for lost time. Uh, I literally, ever since then, I've been playing. I literally play like every day of the week. Well, not now, obviously, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, literally play every day of the week. Six aside training Saturdays, Sundays. I used to literally play. I think at one point I was playing like fifteen times a week. I would play like three times on a Monday, oh. train hmm. on the Tuesday, train on a, uh, on a Thursday, play on a Thursday night after six aside, play six aside Wednesdays, play Thursday six aside, play Saturdays, play Sundays. Um, I literally, I was making up for lost time because I feel like. 
because I hated it when, as I was growing up and I didn't play so much. I was like, I need, I need to play as much as I can. I need to play as much as I can. Mm. Um, and yeah, now just, yeah, football is literally football is life for me. Football is life. Mm. Um, growing up, who were your kind of footballing idols? Uh, my old man, my old man, definitely first and foremost. Because uh, I used to, even when I didn't really like it, I used to, he used to play, he used to play um, six aside, and he used to play Saturdays and Sundays to himself. But towards that, obviously, as he got older, I used to play six aside in Grays where we live. Uh, I used to play down this place called the Ball Court. I used to play every Wednesday and Friday night. Um, so I'd often go with him and just watch. And uh, he was quite, yeah, he's very good. He was a very good player. He's much, be- much better than I was, much better than I am, by far. Um, I used to enjoy watching him play. Um, that's what I guess that's what got me into it, I guess. Mm. Uh, and then obviously watching being a West Ham fan, um, people like Tacanio, Joe Cole, uh, Bobby Moore, even though, even though Bobby Moore was in my era, my dad always showed me videos and stuff of him, Trevor Brookin, mm. uh, people like that. And then as we obviously as I got older and started getting into football, you got like I think R nine Ronaldo for me was I mean if he didn't get that knee injury, I think he would have been the greatest player of all time. Yeah. Like, he, he, he was phenomenal. He was unreal. Hmm. Um, before the whole Palmas thing came about, who were you? Were you playing Sunday league before then? Um, Sundays, Sunday. I didn't start. I started playing. I never played Sunday league until I moved back to Essex. Um, I started playing with my cousin's team. Uh, I think I played for them for a couple of years, uh, and mm-hmm. I actually played against Palmas a few times. Right. Uh, yeah, cause I played against them a few times. I scored against them once. Uh, it's in the video. I think it's called Home and Away. I think I scored after about sixty seconds. Uh, so yeah, I, was, I, I knew of them. Um, I knew a couple of them uh, briefly. I used to play six aside with a few of them. Uh, so I knew a couple of them, sort of. Um, yeah, and then and then yeah, I ended up playing for the. Got invited to play for the B team through one of the guys that I knew. I played six aside with, uh, and it went from there. But yeah, he's played my cousin's team on a Sunday. It's still in still in the Farrick Sunday League. And it's in like the same league as Palmer's. Um, is that how you kind of got to Palmer's and met Smith and everything? Through... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate. Yeah, as I said, I used to play, as, as I just said a minute ago, I know I play a lot of six mm. side. And um, I used to play with a couple of the Palmer's boys on a Thursday, I think it was a Thursday, Thursday night. Uh, and then they, when they said they were starting up the, the B team, the reserves, and they obviously they were looking for for players, um, and one of them asked me, he said, "Oh, do you fancy coming over?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, no worries." My cousin's team had just folded, literally just folded at the end of that season, so I, I was looking for a new team and all. So, mm. so I was like, "Yeah, I'll come over." And then yeah, it just sort of all fell into place. Met a lot of good people, made a lot of good friends, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. Here we mm. are now. Mm. Um, did you find it weird initially? With the camera playing in front of the camera. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, I think I watched a bit of Jack's interview the other day, and he touched on it. Like, it, it is nice to go back and watch, obviously, watch the videos when when you've had, you know, you or you think you've had a good game, and you see good bits. Then obviously, mm-hmm. you get you, know, you get all the bad bits get cool, and then obviously people watching and commenting, and then I mean, it can, yeah, it is daunting. It can be daunting, but in the end, for me, you just sort of forget about it. You just once you're on the pitch, once you're on the pitch. And you start playing. For me, I just forgot about it, and just and just played the game. Um, mm. The only time you sort of notice it is, is before before games, maybe when you when we used to do like Sunday league extras and stuff. Um, you sort of not obviously notice the camera a bit more and stuff. And you'd, I mean, I didn't mind it in the end. I liked it. I liked the camera in the end. I didn't mind. I, I don't mind the camera being on me. Um, I'm not. I'm not too shy or anything like that. So I didn't mind yeah. it. Just don't it. Some people are different. Some people don't like it. Some people. Um, well, it's not that they don't like it. It's just, I guess, some people are a bit more reserved and stuff. Hmm. Um, yeah, I can't lie. I didn't mind the camera being on me. And <laughs> it's all good. Was there was there a decision you had to make, kind of being with the B team? Would you was there an avenue for the first team? Would, did, was there any debate there? Um, well, when I originally I joined the B team originally, uh, done the season with him. And in the second season, I played. Obviously, I went to the to the A team. Hmm. Um, I think it was a bit of a it was a bit of a it was just a bit of a thing. I think between the two sides, we used to have like in in team banter and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like A team versus B team. It was a uh, yeah, it was quite funny. Um, I think it was one of those things where it was like, oh yeah, we're taking Charlie, we're taking Charlie, just to cause a bit of a stir and cause a bit of banter. Hmm. Um, 
and in the, and then in the end, I did I did go over. Um, I mean, I had a very good. I mean, I did I didn't get to play too much. Beginning of the season, I wasn't about too much. Uh, I just met my girlfriend who lived up north, and I was always up there. Um, and I was I was injured at the beginning of the season too, so I wasn't about too much. And I came back, I didn't play too much. I played here and there, um, but it was still a great still a great season to be involved with, and just and with the lads, like uh, winning the treble and winning everything. The Essex Cup final, and still yeah, still getting getting to play here and there. It was, it was like you can't. There's memories who will last forever, like with with good friends too. Yeah, like that's the thing. It's not just any football team you're playing with, like like we used to on a Saturday. Maybe like you don't really, you still class them as friends, but it's more, more mainly to do with football. Whereas on the on that on the Sunday with Palmers, it was like it was all friends and we was all having a good time. We was all having a laugh, and we had a really good season. And it was just yeah, it's just memories will do last with you. How how would you compare the both kind of playing a low? I mean, I say lower standard it is still quite similar. Um, with the B team and then with the uh, first team that second season how would you compare the standards? Uh, I don't know that's a tough question um, like you said I don't think there's I guess I guess the difference is I don't know I, don't, I mean I don't want to say the, the standards are higher because that would be like disrespectful to the B team yeah, the B team yeah, had a very, had, mm. we had a very good team in the B team we had a very good team Um I guess in the A team, the only, I guess in the A team, the difference was obviously maybe quality in a sense of that we had a few like top, like Lewis, semi-pro mm. quality mm. player. Billy Tex is a very very good player. He's played at a very high level. He's had, he, I mean, if anyone doesn't know, he he's played in at Wembley. He's played in he's played in Brazil. He's played mm. at a very good level. Yeah, he's had trials at football league clubs and stuff. So he's a very good player. Uh, Tommy Tommy G. Another great player, could play at any level he wanted to, probably. Yeah, so many kids. Yeah, it, I don't know. I guess that's the only difference to, in that sense of that we had more. I mean, the, the sun, the sun, our sun, like the reserves. I guess we didn't have. We were just turning up to have a laugh on a Sunday, mm-hmm. where and have a good time. We still want to win and everything, and obviously, but with the A team, it was like we want silverware. I guess. Just, I mean, we wanted silverware. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a stupid way to say it because we wanted silverware in the in the B team too. <laughs> But I don't yeah. know. It was. Different. I guess it, there, there are differences to both sides. I mean, but when we when they both played each other, it was very very close games, very close games. So that's how good both sides were. Yeah. Um. We'll we'll, we'll start with the treble season then. That that um the late season before you, uh, Palms came off camera. How how was that kind of experience with the treble? You know, the league. Uh, obviously invincible as well. Um, and then playing at Great Wakering and stuff, the Essex Cup, and how how was how was everything? Yeah, that, I mean, like I said, that was mad. That was a mad season. That was a mad season. I mean, especially yeah, like I said, I missed the I missed the beginning of the season. I was I think I was very ill. I think I, was, I had like a chest infection. Or something. I was very ill at the beginning, like pre season and stuff. And I just mm. met my my girlfriend at the time who lived up north. So I was up and back, up and down from there. So I didn't really get going properly. I didn't really get have a pre-season or get going properly. Um, but the whole season in general, just yeah, just the day, like even on a Sunday, just turning up with the lads, having a laugh, and then winning. It was like there's games we shouldn't have won, but we won just purely because of of the team bond we had. It was just like it got us through games. We was having a laugh. We was having a good time, and we was winning. And it just sort of kept kept rolling on and on and on all season. And then we lost one game that season, one game in the mm. in the cup, the league cup. It was so Stifford who won it in the semi final. We lost. That was the only game we lost that season. Um, but yeah, I'm beating the league Essex Cup. Uh, Ted, was it Ted Fairchild Cup? I think or it might, that might have been the one we lost that we won the league cup. I'm not sure. But I, I don't know. I'm not sure either. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's, it's mad. Like I said earlier, it's, it's memories with friends that you like, you won't forget. Like in twenty years, I'll be like, ah, oh, remember when we won the Essex Cup, mm. like the Essex Premier Cup, and we and we won the league, and we won the other cup. We were treble winners. Uh, not, I mean, I know it's only Sunday league, but not many people get to say that, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, man, it's it's mad. It is mad. It's hard to put into words. It's hard to put into words. Uh, obviously, this season, um, Palmer's came off cameras. Were you still involved? Were you still playing? Uh, yeah, I, I made the decision at the end of at the end of that season, the treble season. 
before anything was discussed about stopping that, I already made decision to go back to the reserves. Right. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have, the, like I said, I didn't have the greatest seasons. I wasn't fit. I was, I didn't get off to the greatest starts. Um, and I'm getting older. <laughs> I know I don't look like it, but I'm getting older. Uh, so I thought, yeah, to go back to the reserves, have a season with him again, just to get back into the swing of things. Um, and we had, we had, we was having a good season to be honest. We we got to the Essex Cup semi final myself. Um, Lost on penalties, though. And that's the game I broke my arm in just before lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously lockdown happened and it put into the season, but it was go- it wasn't going too bad. Uh, but yeah, I think I think after winning the treble and the the journey that Palmer's had been on in general, like like before I was there, like from the beginning, going up the leagues, winning that winning the winning that league and the cup that season hmm. with, with, with Jamie's late goal, uh, getting to the prem finally and then winning it unbeaten, winning the Essex Cup, winning the treble. I think it was like a good way to go out for everyone. It was like, it was a nice way to end it to a certain extent. Did it did it feel weird coming off of cameras? Because you you know being on camera pretty much every week, and then suddenly um, just stopping. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I, I guess you notice it when you do something good, like selfishly. Like mm. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming it's the same for most players. Like imagine you score a goal and it's like, oh, yeah, I wish it was on camera. Now. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Like I said, like that um that season we stopped obviously stopped filming, I went back to reserves in that pre season. Uh, we played a game in Chelmsford, I think it was, against someone, and I scored an absolute worldie from about thirty yards top corner, idiot on the volley. Mm. And it was like, ah oh, shit man, I wish I had that on camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it, uh, it is I mean it can be kinda nice because obviously you ain't on another level you ain't thinking about it anymore, you're like, oh, I ain't got to worry about the camera anymore, so you can just go out and play. Um, so I guess that helps, but yeah, the only the only downside I'd say is, is missing out on them when you score something, like score a decent goal. Saying like, oh, I wish I could see that back. That's the only downside yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Are you what What are your future plan, plans then with football? Um, just wanted to come back. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll, yeah. then we'll go from there. Um, obviously, mm. me and Matt, me and Matt, uh, obviously want to get back on the road. Because uh, that was that was just starting to take off. We're starting to do do it regularly. We're starting to, to go up north. We're starting to get about. Um, it was getting good numbers, and then obviously lockdown happened, putting into it. So yeah, we want to get that back moving. Um, football wise, Sundays I'll probably play for the reserves again next season when it's back, if it's back, whenever it's back. Um, obviously, I give up Saturday playing Saturdays to go on the road. Right. And then and then just loads of six aside during the week. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Let's move on to on the road then. I mean, there was, I think your debut was Notts County, there was, but there was loads of people before you. What, 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 what do you think made you stand out as being the kind of permanent co-host almost? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess. I mean, we still ask people to come with us, or Matt. I think Matt, Matt asked people to come with. Us. I don't know. I mean. I just, Matt always asked me, do you want to come this week? And I was like, yeah. Like, I was always, I love watching football. So he'd ask me and I'd literally just say, yeah, all right. Um, mm. But well, to, be, to begin with, it was hard because obviously I was playing Saturdays myself, like I said. So he'd ask me and I'd be like, oh, I can't this week. That's why I wasn't about. So regularly, but if I ever had a spare Saturday or he was doing a midweek game, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Um, I just love watching football. So yeah, that's the mm. only reason, I guess I'd say, is that he asked me and I'd always say, yeah. <laughs> mm. And then... Uh, and then as it started happening more frequently, um, I think I got. I think uh, I think it might have been when I, I broke my shoulder a couple of years back, and obviously I was out. I couldn't do anything for a few months, mm. so obviously I was I was free, and I think I started going more regularly with him. Obviously, where I had more time, so and then I sort of yeah, I just got involved. I started. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching all the football, traveling about, seeing different grounds, um, and it just sort of slipped into place, and uh, yeah, I just ended up. Mm. So how it, I don't know how it came about, to be honest. <laughs> it just mm. it sort of just fell into place, I guess. Mm. Do you prefer going to kind of more Premier League Championship grounds or do you prefer going non-league? Um, I love non-league. I think uh, me and Matt both love non-league. It's, uh, it feels more... I don't know what's the, what's the word. It feels more... I don't know. It's just... I guess it's close. I don't know what the word is. It's closer to the action. Like you're next to the pitch, mm. you interact more with the players. Um, there's, there's less fans, obviously, so you get to speak to more people. I guess to a certain extent. I don't. Know, it just feels more 
close knit and, and involved, and you see some and you see some great players at non-league level, like some great players, and you see some fun, you see some funny stuff. You see, like it's, I don't know, yeah, it's it's just I, we love non-league. It's just everything about it: the food, the people, the grounds, the, the teams, the football. I mean, don't get me wrong, you see some absolute stinkers of a game, but it's still it's non-league. It's like that. It's I don't know. It's just got something about it. It's got everything. It's got a bit of everything. Um, but on the road wise, we did we we found that like League One, League Two is a good middle ground yeah. um, for, for everything because it's fairly cheap. You get good you get good grounds, you get decent atmospheres, get some decent food. So we'd say League One, League Two is like the is the middle ground of where you, you should. That's why you find most League One, League Two sides high up the table because they get a bit. They've got a bit of everything there. Mm. What would you say is the kind of one of your most favourite games you've you've been to on the road? Uh, <laughs> I always get asked this. Uh, Oxford, Oxford. I mean, it weren't the greatest of games, but the last five minutes were just mad. It was right. like it's what you go to football for. It was just West Ham were playing Huddersfield, uh, who my girlfriend supports. She supports Huddersfield. I forgot West Ham. They were Huddersfield were beating us three uh, <laughs> one, and West Ham came back and won four three with like a ninety second minute winner, and I was mm. going mad. I was like, yes. And then Oxford scored to make it 1-0 in like the 90, literally just after. And it was like the whole crowd went wild. Geezer yeah. next to me, grabbed me, started hugging me, we started celebrating. It was just limbs everywhere. Matt started going crazy. It was just crazy. It was just like, if you could bottle up that atmosphere, like that last five minutes of atmosphere and, and everything, it was mad. You'd, you'd be a millionaire. It was like euphoria. It was, it was mad. It was, it's weird because, like I said, the game wasn't great at all. But, yeah, that last five minutes was just what football was about. It just sh- showcased what football should be about too. Just everyone having a good time, celebrating, and limbs mm. and everything. That's one of the yeah. That game will always stick in my mind as 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 one of my favourites. I think just for that. Mm. Would well, I guess we'll do it on the road style. What is it? Was that one of your kind of most favourite atmospheres? Um, <laughs> I, yeah, just that end bit. I mean, other good atmospheres I've heard uh, when we've been there, like well, just saying that Sheffield, we went to Sheffield Wednesday, um, mm. and they've they they got the you know England like the England national yeah. team, the band they have that go around with them. They're they're from Sheffield Wednesday, right? Crowd, that's like, okay. that's with them. Um, mm. And we went to Sheffield Wednesday, and they, the first ten minutes they were it was superb. We was like, oh, we're going to get a good atmosphere. Uh, mm. And then they went three 0 down after about thirty minutes, <laughs> and it sort of just mm. killed killed the game. So they could have had a really good atmosphere. Uh, Huddersfield was a great atmosphere. Uh, what other games did I go to? Ones that I've been to. I mean, the ones I missed, like Colchester, Cardiff. Mm. Uh, they had, like, watching the videos, they had superb atmosphere, but I missed them. Uh, ones I've, yeah, ones I've been to, I'd say Tunbridge, Tunbridge Angels, Huddersfield, Oxford for that last five minutes. Uh, what other good ones did we go to? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Stevenage, I think they had, they had good spells. They had good atmosphere. I like, I mean, like, we always say though, me and Matt, like you have to be lucky to get a good score at the end of the day because everything has to come to play, come into place on the day. Yeah. Like if we like we did with Sheffield Wednesday, they went three 0 down after half hour, so automatically their atmosphere is just going to go down because mm. any side that's three 0 down after half hour yeah. is just going to get yeah. get deflated. So you have to be fortunate. Like the, like when we went Huddersfield, they went two 0 up in the first half hour, so atmosphere was buzzing. Crowd was buzzing. The game was good. It was exciting. Uh, the food was decent. Cost was pretty good. So it, it all come into place. Whereas mm. somewhere like Sheffield Wednesday, three and a half half hour at home, crowd goes down, atmosphere drops, and then and then that can put an aspect on in your mind on other things. Like you might get a pie at half time, and because the atmosphere has been bad and the football's been not too good, you get a pie, and because the pie maybe ain't to to a good standard, you're then like, oh, that's, this is crap and all. So. It's just, yeah, you have, to, you have to be lucky to get a good score on a day. Everything has to come into place for you. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the pie there. What, what kind of food and drink stands out as one of the best? Uh, food-wise, right, food-wise. Best best food that we've had, or oh, I've had personally, I liked. Uh, Tunbridge Angels is up there. Great burgers were unreal. Uh, Dulwich Hamlet had good pies. Uh, Maidstone had very good pies, five-star. Uh, unbelievable! I think I had a chicken balti. I think it was unbelievable. Mm. Uh, where else? A lot of non-league grounds. It depends. Like me and Matt like a nice greasy burger. Mm. Uh, so yeah, a lot of non-league grounds have had some good burgers. Don't get me wrong. We've had some bad burgers. We've had some real bad burgers. 
uh, I won't mention names, but there was one ground that was like literally taking rusters. You know, rusters you get from like yeah, rusters. I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were taking them, opening them, and then like microwaving them and selling them as, as burgers. But it's yeah, terrible. Uh, can't can't do that. Yeah, it's not it's, it's not great, but <laughs> but I mean yeah, at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. But if yeah, they weren't the greatest. So yeah, I, I mean chips chips are chips are a tough one. We've had some real stinkers for chips too. Some places do nice chips. Uh, it all depends too. Like you find, especially like the higher up you go to the league grounds, you have you have they have like burger vans and stuff outside, and then they have food inside. So there's a big difference because if you you tend that's why a lot of lower league grounds have better food because they might have a food stand with like mm. a burger van, and they obviously that's cooked fresh there and then. Yeah. Whereas food food inside the ground obviously gets cooked in batches and left on like a heater to keep warm and stuff. So. Mm. They can go like if you, imagine you get a burger and it's been sitting there for half hour on the heater. It's, it's not going to be great, is it? So, I, unfortunately, they might. Get, that's not working for them. So, make sure I'd say to all football grounds, no matter what level you at, get a burger van outside. Get a burger van. <laughs> um, few, what are your kind of future plans with on the road? Are you, are you looking to go abroad? Maybe. Mate, that's the dream. That is the yeah. dream. That's the plan. I mean, we, we we was looking to go. I mean, it's not abroad, abroad, but we we was looking to go Ireland this summer, like we was right. planning to. Uh, but obviously, that's that's been put to the mm. to the back now. Uh, maybe ge- somewhere like Germany, France, maybe too. Um, we might have got to. Uh, we've always said we'd like to go to a random team too, like just pick a random team at the lower league in like Czech Republic or something, <laughs> and. Yeah. Uh, and go and watch them because that'd be great. To be actually saying that, I think it was Czech Republic. Was it Czech Republic? I think it was Czech Republic. To please say, I think uh, they got in touch with Matt about us going over. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, mm. towards the end of last season. So we'll, we'll definitely get somewhere. We'll definitely get somewhere. But first things first, we've got to get football back. And I'd yeah. imagine non league non league would probably be back before before the big grounds, I reckon, like letting people in, I'd assume. Do you think? Mm. So hopefully we can get to some non-league games, maybe. But I don't think I don't think it anywhere is going to be letting people into their grounds this year. I think it'll be next year that people. Mm. I don't know. It depends. I guess it depends on how lockdown goes and how how. I mean, I don't really want to talk about it too much because I don't really know enough about it. But yeah, I guess it all depends on that and how how work, how well we get the numbers down in that and, and when we can start going back to stuff. But yeah, I can't imagine it being anytime soon. But unfortunately mm-hmm. on the road might be on the uh, on the back on the back foot for now. Yeah. I, I saw you on um I think it was James was it uh James Allcott, I think that's his name, on his football manager series. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a are you a fan of football manager? Mate, I love football manager. I've been playing football manager since yeah, since since I was a team. I think the first football manager I ever played was Championship Manager ninety seven, ninety eight, I think. Mm. And I think I literally I think I've bought every single one since up until Football Manager came out. I think it was Football I think it might be was it Football Manager two thousand and five. I started buying I bought that and I think I bought every one since. Mm. Um, even if I don't play it. I mean, over the last over the last five years I probably don't play it as much as I, as I used to, but I still buy it. Like I I have to have it. <laughs> Uh, just in case I want to go and have a game, um, but I bought this year's one, uh, FM20, and I did start a save with Kiddy Minster. Um, right. I've got him to, the, I've got him to the championship, uh, but I haven't played it. I haven't played it since about a month ago. I don't think so. I need to get back into it really. Mm-hmm. Would, would you would you say that kid, that Kiddy Minster save is probably one of your best, or is there any better ones that you've had? Oh mate, <laughs> I've had some corkers over the years. I had some real corkers. Uh, I remember one, I think I must have championship manager 2001. I think I had a save with South End. I got him to the Champions League final. Right. Uh, yeah. I think I, had, I, think I, done, I think I done one with Plymouth too. Um, yeah. But for every good story, there's a bad one. Like when I first bought FM20 before the Kidding Minster save, that was my second. That's the only the second save I started. And that was the only, but the first one I started, I think I got sacked after about a month, hmm. uh, <laughs> which led me on to the Kidding Minster one. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's a good game. It's, it's there if you like football and you like and you like tweaking your tactics and things. It's a good game to play. It keeps you busy, especially yeah. during lockdown. Yeah, I've been I've been playing it non-stop during lockdown. Yeah, well, to be fair, mate, that's that's what just start of lockdown. I was playing it consistently, and then when I started streaming, obviously, yeah, the spare time I get now, I do I end up streaming. So I 
I thought of, yeah, I mean, you've been had a chance to play it. But you think you do a lot of Warzone? Do you think Warzone's probably your favourite game at the moment? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Me and me and me and Smith were speaking about it last night. It's, it's, it's the first game uh, in a, in a long while that I actually come off and think, yeah, I've really enjoyed that. Like, mm. I really enjoy playing that. Like we obviously with FIFA and that, I, thought, I can't remember the last time I come off FIFA thinking, yeah, I've really enjoyed playing that. Yeah, just too mm. too yeah, too ragey. I, I mean, I didn't mind Fortnite for a while, but even that stresses me out now. Um, mm. GTA, I mean, I love GTA um, mm. and things like that. But yeah, Warzone, I'm getting I'm I'm getting pretty good at it too. I'm not getting too bad at it, so I'm, I'm starting to get better. So I'm, yeah, I'm really enjoying it at the minute. Mm. Well, we'll kind of move on to some more general questions uh we'll start with pre-match music what are you listening to pre-match pre-match music um anything really i don't i mean I, yeah i love all sorts of music but i guess if it was like a cup final or something or a big game i'd like to have something that would pump me up so maybe some something like house yeah house music or <laughs> i used to hate it i hate i don't i not hate it, but I'm not really a big fan of it. I don't mind listening to it. I'm not really a big fan of like drum and bass and things like that. Um, but Jack Carter used to used to bang out some <laughs> drum and bass and, and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and even I was, even I didn't enjoy it so much to listen to, like, but it did get you pumped up because it was like mm. it was yeah, it, was, it got you going. So yeah, maybe something like that, something to get you going, something with high tempo. Yeah, um, I mean, you mentioned six aside. We'll, we'll we'll do that. Six aside, kind of Palmer's FC or before that. Who who's who would you have as your best six aside team? Wow! If you could choose six aside team. Wow! Yeah. Um, I'll go with yeah. It's a tough one. I mean, we had a, we had a good spell on the six side. We won we won back to back to back leagues. Uh, we had a good little side over there. I'm trying to think. Obviously, Frank was our most consistent keeper. Um, he's a very good. He's a very good six aside keeper, Frank. Very good six mm. aside keeper. Uh, he's a very good keeper in general, but six aside, he's, he's a very good keeper. Um, so I'll probably say Frankie. I'll go. For, I'll go Frank and goal, just because he was consistently over there. I'm going to go with who consistently played and stuff. So Frank and goal. Um, do I pick myself? Do I pick myself in this? <laughs> well, I mean, you can do if you want. I mean, <laughs> believe in yourself or not, um, up to you. I love six aside. Six aside. Six aside. As much as I love football and love playing eleven aside, six aside. I think because it's what I started playing first and foremost. I've always loved six aside. Hmm. Um, it's a tough one to answer, man. I'm trying to think. Who did we have over there? Who did we have over there? I mean, I had a good. We had a good six aside team before that. Me and Lee Atkinson, uh, Nick Hope. Uh, we used to have a team called West Farrick over there who was very, we had a very good side uh, I'd say yeah all right, Frank, Nick Hope Frank, Nick Hope um, Frank, Nick Hope Lee Atkinson that's free uh, who scored all that goals over there Connor Connor White up top Frank Frank in goal Nick Hope Lee Atkinson um, Connor White, uh, frustrating player because he never turns up sometimes. He always has a mad night before, but <laughs> if he turns up, he was a he was a fantastic player, fantastic player. So I definitely have him in the side. Uh, and then two more. It is tough. I did pick it. I did pick it a while ago. Um, I can't remember. I picked uh, Tommy G. I think Tommy G has to go. And he he went over there as much, but we did. Uh, yeah, very good. Very good stick side player too. Scores a lot of goals, surprisingly. Scores a lot of goals, six aside. Uh, so Connor White, Tommy G, Nick Hope, Leah, said Frank, and um... oh, it's a tough one. It's so tough. I'm just gonna put myself in there. Yeah, I'm gonna put. I can't. I can't, I've got to put myself in. <laughs> I've got to put myself in. I've got to put myself in. So yeah, that would be Frank, Nick Hope. Lee Atkinson, me, Tommy G, and Connor White. Um, moving on to who was the kind of loudest in the dressing room? Who who got everyone going? Who maybe was the kind of funniest almost? 
<laughs> I'm sure you could tell some pretty good stories Mate, from the dressing room there's, apartments. <laughs> there's been stories on my Instagram <laughs> of uh of the pre-game and after-game, post-game showers and stuff. Uh, change room antics. Nick Hope, definitely, 100%. When yeah. Nick Hope comes along, yeah. He's the, funniest, he's the funniest, most nicest guy you'd ever meet. He's just, yeah, he's, he's a top bloke. I mean, all the Palmers guys are. They're, they're all a great bunch. But Nick Hope, mm. yeah, he was just... He was, he was off-key, as we say. He was a madman. He was a madman, but in a good way. In a good way. Mm. Mm. Always up for a laugh. He'd do anything. Uh, yeah, top geezer. Proper funny. He's the, yeah, funniest geezer, definitely. Who who would you say was the most skillful at Palmer? Oh, skillful over the years. It's been some skill. What? Mm. Or just in general, doing skills. Like if you was if you was uh, on FIFA, well, you, I mean, you was yeah, it could be that, or you know, going around players, you know, stuff like that. Um, going around players. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously Lewis was very skillful. He used to glide past people. Josh Knowles. Used to go past people with ease. Um, uh, we had a player this season in the reserves called uh, JB, who's a big, he's oh, a big yeah. guy, but mate, he was unreal with the ball. He'd literally glide past people, literally glide past people. Uh, Shove, Shove was a very good player, skillful getting around people. He used to love putting the keeper down. He's like, he's like Ronaldo. Mm. He's always sitting the keeper down. Uh, Tommy G used to go past people. You know, not maybe you wouldn't see him as skillful because he didn't really do it with skill. But he yeah. he he could go past, he could go past someone, sit like with a little drop of the shoulder, sell someone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else did we have over there? Lee Henry, the one of the wingers. He was very quick. He'd go past people. Uh, Nolsey, Nolsey, back especially back in the day, mm. he used to fly down that left wing with that with that wonderful left peg. Um. But yeah, I probably yeah. If, I mean, if you're talking skillful, skillful, then probably probably Lewis or or yeah, Lewis Lewis or Sharp probably got a few skill, got a few tricks up their sleeve. Mm. Um, underrated. Who do you think was the most underrated player at Palmers that maybe didn't get a mention as much of a mention as he should have? Uh, well, he did, but he, I guess he didn't. Maybe to people watching, but for, for, for between us lads, like. Especially that treble winning season, Brad Webb. Mm. Brad Webb, mate, I'm, I'm real power. Puts everything on the line, hundred percent every week. But yeah, literally leaves everything on that pitch. You know, even if he's having a bad game, you're still, you're still, you, you, you still want him out there because he just offers you so much. You literally won't stop running. You won't stop. You'll get stuck in. You won't. He won't pull out a challenge. Mm. He'll get forward. He'll get back. If he gets forward, he'll get back. Uh, he played. I think he played right back, centre back, centre mid, right mm. wing probably at one stage. Um, yeah, very. He's not underrated in my eyes because I rate him highly. But yeah. uh, I, can ima- I can imagine from people just watching the highlights on the video who don't see all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, then in that sense, he'd be underrated. You, uh, watching the videos, you, you might not see all that. So in that mm-hmm. sense, yeah, he'd be underrated. Who who kind of do you think was the overall best player on that team? I'm just gonna say Tommy G. All right. It's a tough one. It's a tough one because there's so many good players. Every player, that's mm. especially that treble winning season. That treble winning season, every player in that squad was quality. Like if someone was missing, you was, you didn't mind it because someone was coming coming in. It was just as good, if not better. You know. Um, and it, I mean, like, I mean, you could just reel off the names. Everyone, like Billy Tex, Lewis, German, Garen in goal, and on pitch, Brad Webb, Nick Hope. Josh in the centre mid, Josh Knowles, Knowlesy, uh, you know, even Nick Hornland, he didn't play so much that year, but he, when he did, he mm. got goals. Um, yeah, literally, name like Lee Henry, uh, literally, just reel off the names, it was all quality. Um, but yeah. Tommy G, for me, just made, just made football effortless, and then play, and to play with him was 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 a, a delight. Like, he could, yeah, he just, I like it when people keep things simple. He got the ball, he moved it on, he could pick a pass, um, as I said, he did. He, he could go past people with ease too, with a little drop of the shoulder. It's just like it was just it was just great to watch. And he'd get stuck in. He would never put out a challenge either. He loved to, he loved to, he loved a good solid challenge. Mm. Um, and like I said, he could he could have played. I reckon he could have played at a very high level if he wanted to. Such a good player. What what do you think on that uh, in that treble season? What do you think as well as having uh, obviously all the names you've just. Uh, 
kind of uh, named. How 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 important do you think the team cohesion that season was, and you know, team bonding almost. Yeah, like oh. like I said, yeah, like I said earlier, that the team bond we had that year and the team togetherness is what got us through games. Sometimes, like I said, mm. like, there's probably there's probably a few games we shouldn't have won. Um, maybe we nicked it uh, just purely because of that team togetherness and that bond where it was like we was having so much fun and we enjoyed turning up to games and mm. it was like you'd, you'd look forward to Sunday because uh, it weren't just to play football it's to see the lads have a good laugh go down the pub after have a beer um, and that, yeah that literally got us through some games I think like, and that, all good teams need that all good teams need luck all good teams need a, if you ain't got a good team bond then them games that are tough and you are losing one nil maybe or you go one nil down and your heads go down and everything drops and yes mm. when you lose games because you can't come back but when you've got that good bond and togetherness and you're having a laugh and you go one nil down on the pitch maybe and you look mm. around your pal's there and he's like oh, come on mate just get red up let's go let's go we can do this you know and it, yeah it got us through games mate it, it was it was unreal like I said it was, it was the best team I, I I know it was only Sunday league but even going back to my Saturday football, I played some very good Saturday teams over the years. I won a lot of trophies on Saturdays. Um, played at a lot of big grounds too. But yeah. that team on that Sunday, that season, was the best team I played in. Like football, mm. footballing-wise and just as a whole team in general of lads and having a great time and the bond. Like, yeah, it was unbelievable. It was the best side I played. Best side I played in footballing-wise and off the pitch. What you uh, you mentioned, you've played at some big grounds. What what do you think is the best ground you've played at? Uh, <laughs> probably wet. Probably ain't even a ground to be fair. It was just it was England's training ground for Palmer yeah. the other year, mate. Yeah, that that's pitch, what that's what Jack said. Yeah, mate. The pitch it was uh it was like it was too good to be real. It was <laughs> it was yeah. Mate, if that's what like if that's what professionals get to play on every week, mate, it's oh, I'd, you'd you'd, you'd give your right leg to play on it every week it was just a dream for me it was literally just a just oh i can't describe it It was a bit like honestly it was unreal it was just like mm. it was like a carpet it was like a carpet it was just but it, yeah i don't know i can't know how to explain it it's, it is the, honestly the, yeah the greatest pitch i've ever played yeah. on the yeah. pitch was it was mad and it wasn't even a stadium but the pitch it obviously being england's training ground it was obviously well looked after and it was yeah definitely that was that that was the best pitch played on 100 percent Mm. Uh, moving on, kind of kits wise, I I like my football kits. I love my football kits. I got one on right now. How Palmer's kits? Do you think this season was maybe the best kit, or did you prefer ones from before? Um, this season's kit was very nice. Um, I think my favourite one was the season before. Out of the two, probably. Uh, but I really enjoyed before I joined Palmer's. I really, I really liked the original kit too. Mm. It's just something about. I think I think it was just because it was Palmer's original kit and all the old lads playing together. That still sticks in your mind. Um, so you, when I think of Palmer's, I think of that. Like before I joined, because I used to watch them before I joined. Because obviously, as I said, I used to play against them. Um, I remember mm. the first time I played against them years ago. When just before they got like big, 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 they might have been on like ten thousand subscribers or something. They was just start, they was just starting to get big. Uh, we played against them, and Matt Smith messaged our manager and was like, "Oh, we upload our games to YouTube if any of mm. lads fancy watching." Mm. So obviously, a few of us went over, watched it, and then I started watching all of it. Like then I started watching all the videos, and I started mm. watching Matt's other videos, like place your bets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I was like, I was sort. Of, I guess I was a fan to a certain extent before mm. before I joined them because I was always watching and keeping up to date with them. Mm. So yes, yeah, when when I think of Palmer's, that that's that's what I think of first. Like firstly, is that original kit that season, that wonder goal that Jamie scored to win in the league. Mm. That, that's what comes to my mind first. Obviously, obviously the Essex Cup too now. But yeah. Mm. How before before we call it a day? How do you think football should return? Oh mate, I don't know. I don't. Complicating know. one, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I guess there's no right one, right way. Then there's no wrong way. Mm. It's, it's, I mean, I guess there's no right time either to bring it back. When is the right time to bring it back? Yeah, I guess it's just sometimes you just got to do it and then hope it goes well. If it doesn't, I'm for, But I mean, your, people's lives are at stake, I guess, too. So it's mm. so tough. It's so tough. I, 
I don't know. I mean, I guess if if it's just the players obviously playing in the stadium and there's no fans involved, it's just I guess if all the players are happy to play, um, like I me, mean, me, like me personally, if it, if I was playing and they was like, do you want to go back playing? I'd be like, yeah, I, I'd want to, even if it put, meant putting my life at risk or whatever. But um, I don't know. It's a tough one. I, t- I don't think there is a right time to bring it back. Um, per- personally, I'd, I'd probably leave it for now and just count to the season. Liverpool were miles ahead anyway. They deserve to win the title. Void, like, not, not void the season, just may- maybe end it on the points per game thing. Get it done and just build for next season so we can build to start the next season and get that ready and up and running perfectly for when it, for when it needs to come back rather than yeah. trying to squeeze all this season in now and then... Hmm rush next season in to try and get it started and everything. And so I personally probably would have left it, got, got this season out of the way, just left that and then moved on to next season and focused on getting that ready. That would have been probably my preference if I was doing mm-hmm. it. As much as we all want to play, like I want to play now, I want to go out and kick a ball around with my mm-hmm. powers and play on Sunday. But I guess you've got to be, you've got to be logical about it and do what's best for everyone. Mm. Um, any, any shout outs you want to make before we go? Uh, Shout out, I don't know. Not uh, shout. I just guess, shout out the lads. Shout out Palmers. Maybe they'll be back one day. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. Just saying. Just saying. You never know. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, shout, shout out my mixer. If you, if you like streaming or you like watching gay people stream, enjoy games. Come and check me out, on mixer. Um, and shout out, sh- yeah, shout out Smith. Shout out for bringing it, bringing us, bringing us everything over the years. To mm. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, Charlie, thanks, thanks for being on. Um, no, it's been a pleasure, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you um, for having me. I'll be I'll be checking out the streams definitely. Also, uh, your kind of videos with Smith, you're still doing. I mean, I saw the Cara challenge. Um, yeah, we, you know, videos we've got a few like more that. Lined up. We've got a few more lined up. We've got we've got a, when the Premier League comes back, we've got something we want to try out. We've got a little series maybe that can work alongside it. Hmm. So keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled, mate. Then yeah, thank, thanks, thanks for coming on. I said. Obviously. No worries, mate. Sorry, uh, sorry, it took so long. I've been a nightmare. No, uh, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> I, like, I literally went out this morning to get some bits, and I got stuck in traffic, and I, did, and I went. Oh uh, yeah, just yeah, nightmare. But anyway, thanks for having me, mate. I appreciate it. Well, cheers, and uh, it's been a pleasure. You know, all the best for the future, and and yeah. and you, mate, and you. Stay in touch. Cheers. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No worries, bro. See Take you it later. easy. See you later, mate. Peace See you out. later. Nice one, bro.